Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 201. As always, I'm your host, James Shotwell, and it is great to be with you again. My guest this week is none other than my friend Michael from the band King Falcon. Now, if you've never heard this group before, you are truly missing out on rock's next big thing. King Falcon has this kind of raucous approach to their sound that brings to mind bands like Jet and those early 2000s alt-slash-indie rock groups that were really pushing the threshold of blending punk with more classic ideas of what rock and roll should be. And the results are really exciting. The band's recent single, Shake, 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 is an earworm that you will not be able to get rid of, and I highly suggest you put it in your life as soon as possible. But before we get to the conversation, I want to tell you a few quick things. This episode of Inside Music, like every episode of the show, is brought to you by Holix, the music industry's leading digital promotional distribution platform. What that means is that Holix helps record labels and independent artists worldwide share their music with tastemakers. And you can use the same platform used by artists such as Slipknot, Tool, Bruce Springsteen, and countless more by visiting holix.com today. That's H-A-U-L-I-X.com today. Go there, sign up, and your first month of service is absolutely free. I also want to ask that you check out our YouTube channel. It's called Music Biz. It's my favorite place on YouTube, and I think you'll enjoy it as well. That's Music B-I-Z on YouTube. So go ahead and check that out. But right now, just sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Inside Music. Okay. Yes. So you're like in the heart of it all. Uh, just outside the heart of it all. The heart <laughs> of it is in Manhattan, uh, and I'm probably about ten minutes away, ten minute drive. So it, it's. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's it's worse here than it is in like Minnesota. But uh, <laughs> yes, I'm in Michigan, so it's like we're like mid level. Like it's it's fine, sickness wise, but not fine, uh, crazy people wise. I don't think anywhere is fine, crazy people wise. Mm, you bring, you bring a good point. You bring a good point. Well, I'm glad to see that you're healthy, and it seems like you're staying safe in Queens. Is there are, are people out and about? Are people trying to get back to normal there yet? Yeah, we're we're starting to see some more cars on the road the last two weeks. Oh. Um, actually, you know, crazily enough, James, um, not not you, James, James, uh, the drummer of King Falcon, um, had coronavirus and lost his sense of smell from it. Yeah, he got tested. He doesn't still have it. He has the antibody, so he definitely did have it. Um, but yeah, he's he's been doing a study where every single day he's got to smell a bunch of stuff, like really, really fragrant stuff, you know, like vanilla extract, like cologne, like stuff that really smells. And he can't smell a thing. And it's been like two weeks. It's crazy. Yeah, what what a sense to lose, huh? You know, I feel like it's it must be a weird time to release like a really fun, upbeat rock song right as the world is kind of shutting down in a lot of ways but at the same time i would argue that it's exactly what people need so like for you what's it been like seeing people respond to the song in this weird time yeah i mean you kind of hit the nail on the head you know we weren't we weren't um going through a, a depression when we made it we, we were happy because <laughs> we've got a brand new band and we're, we're gonna start touring we're gonna have some shows so yeah we're like let's do something happy and fun and then kind of on one side you know it's a bit strange having the song come out because you know this is this is a really depressing time for everybody. But then kind of on the flip side of that, we've gotten a lot of response from people who are super energized about the song. They really dig it. Uh, and it's just a change of pace from the misery of the news 24-7. You know, if you, if you spend any time watching CNN, you're going to want to jump off the nearest bridge that you could find, but not without touching things first because, you know, you don't want to get coronavirus. But, uh, you know, I think Shake came out uh, at a good time because it's a little bit of a distraction. And that's our job, really, is to, to entertain people and distract people. That's, that's what artists are supposed to do. Now, you mentioned some shows. When Shake came out, was it supposed to kick off a big series of like events and announcements for you guys? Or was this just like, put it out and see what happens, and then everything else happened? No, we had a whole bunch of stuff lined up. <laughs> uh, we, we had some shows in Nashville. We had some shows in Texas planned. We had some shows just kind of like all over. We had some stuff in L.A. planned. 
um, obviously stuff in New York where I'm from, but all of that got canceled like a week before our first show. We, the email started coming in. Hey, you know, this is the owner of so-and-so venue. Uh, sorry, guys, can't come. And we're like, yeah, we saw that one coming. So everything got kind of shut down. And on top of that, you know, we had um, – so James and I have um, recorded a whole EP, actually. Shake is not the only thing that we have done. We've got five songs in total, in, including Shake. And our plan was to record a video now and then release the next single in midsummer. And I think we're still going to do that, but but the issue that that we're having is we kind of really can't be in, in the same room together, and we can't go outside to film places, so we still have to make a video, we still have to do all this other stuff, because we don't want to put out a song and then not have some kind of visual to go with it, because, you know, people love music videos, so we've had a lot of challenges that we've had to overcome, and kind of all of our plans um, from day one have been completely changed. The only thing that, that didn't get changed was the recording, so... Listen, it's a it's a different it's a different time that we're living in now, and I think everything after this is going to be completely different. Now, is "Shake" a song that represents the other material on the release? Is it that kind of fun, upbeat energy throughout? Um, no, it's different. Uh, I think "Shake" is definitely the the happiest of the bunch. The rest are a little bit more. Uh, the production is different. I'll put it that way. So, "Shake" is very simple. It's it's rock and roll. It's fun. And the other ones, James and I. I think went a little bit off off the deep end just with textures and it's a little bit more tame impala and a little bit less um black keys i think in the alt rock genre no i think the black keys is probably a band you guys get related to a lot when people are talking about your music yeah well i you know i've talked about this a lot um you know i think that if you're trying to get into a specific genre then sounding like other people in that genre is fine. You know, it's different when you have like a, a band like Greta Van Fleet, where everybody goes, man, they sound exactly like Led Zeppelin. You know, they sound just like them. However, a band like us, I, I, I think we kind of have a unique sound, but if we happen to have elements of other people in the genre, I think that means we're doing something right because we're, you know, if you set out to, if you set out to make a sports car and you come back with something that's, 6,000 pounds and has four doors. It's not a sports car. You know, it, it, it's, it's not right. But if you set out to make, you know, like alt rock, if you set out to make alt rock and it sounds like the guys who are making alt rock, you, you hit your goal. So yeah, we, uh, we sound a little bit like them, but I think we, we have our own unique thing too, because we're, um, I think, I think a little bit more classic sounding maybe. I think the first band that I connect you guys to, like when I hear Shake at least, is it sounds like a song Jet would release, like yeah. way back in the day. I but I feel like cool. the kids today don't know about Jet, I don't feel like. No, nah, well, listen, the kids today don't know about a lot of stuff. But... <laughs> That's true. That's why yeah. they like Red Van well, Fleet. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're like, wow, we've never heard anything like this before. And listen, not to take anything away from Red Van Fleet, those guys are phenomenal musicians. I mean, if, if, um, if you see them live, and they break out into one of their jams, which is like 15, 20 minutes long. Listen, it doesn't matter if you sound like Led Zeppelin or, or anything. Just the sheer musicianship of those guys is incredible. However, the shtick is that they sound like Zeppelin. And you, you can't deny that. So no hate against Greta Van Fleet, but they, they sound like Zeppelin. Yeah, sometimes sounding like things really opens doors. I mean, it's just, that's just how it works. You know? Listen, if I could sing like Robert Plant, I would. But I can't. So I don't. <laughs> Also that, right? Like yeah, that if also I could helps. do that, I would do it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. 100%. All right, man. Well, you just were, you kind of, we've kind of been beating around this idea for a minute that, you know, King Falcon is a relatively new band. So for people that are maybe hearing this that aren't familiar with you, what's the origin story of the group? So James and I um, are in another band and have been for like 10 years. So we worked together for a long time making rock music. And that other band's called The Inoculated Canaries, which has its own issues in its own right because the name's really long and the music's a little bit weird. But we've been doing it for a while and that's, that's like our, our project. So I th after, um, I don't know, uh, kind of in the middle of last year, we, we started to get into, I started to, well, I started to get into Tame Impala a couple years ago. And then James kind of started getting into a bunch of stuff. And then we were, we were talking about it. We we're like, you know, we want to start an alt rock project. We want to start something that's, that's modern, that's, that's got classic influences, but definitely you'd hear us like on alt nation, you know, whatever, whatever that serious XM channel sounds like. So we were tossed names back and forth. Uh, it was me, James and, and the two other guys in the Canaries um, called uh, Brian and Dylan. That's their name. So originally it was going to be the four of us. Um, and then, King Falcon, the name got proposed. 
everybody was like, yeah, that was okay. And then we went through 300 other names and then decided to go back to King Falcon. So that one stuck. Uh, then last minute, um, Brian and Dylan were like, you know, actually we kind of have too many other life commitments to do this. So it's just going to be you and James. So then we were like, okay, guess we're just a duo now. So that's how that happened. Uh, and then we had to kind of put together some sort of like, like a sound. Yes, alt rock, but what does King Falcon sound like? Uh, and instead of doing that in advance, what we did was we booked a ticket to LA and we flew out with nothing written to go meet with two producers. Uh, and we were there for three days. And in those three days, we went from no ideas, nothing, to finished, mixed, mastered song, uh, and that's Shake. And then that, that kind of formulated the rest of King Falcon, I think. Which, uh, for, for me to say it, I know what the next part sounds, I, I know what the, the next episode is like because I've already recorded the music, but you guys will hear it too soon at some point. No, and I can't wait. I, I, like, I like that idea of just messing with stuff and then being, stumbling upon it and being like, this is it. Like, this is what we're trying to go for. I just think that, um, especially with music or any kind of art, really, it's so easy to overthink everything because you're, you're your own worst critic. You know, you, you can pick apart notes, you can pick apart melodies, words, everything. You're like, ah. But if you just give yourself a time frame of like, okay, guys, we got to go from nothing to having the whole thing done in three days. It forces you to just kind of follow your gut. And Shake is really the result of James and I just being like, all right, see if this works. And then it worked. So we, we got very lucky. And then you were like, now we have to write five more songs. <laughs> yeah, well, so we had a, our first show coming up on April 1st. And originally the plan for that was we were going to do Shake, which was the only King Falcon song that existed. And then we were going to have the guys from the Canaries come on and we were going to do a couple covers. We were going to do some Canary songs, just make it like a music festival kind of thing. And then uh, our manager came to us and was like, actually, um, I'm going to get some label people to come and there's going to be some like legit, you know, music industry people there. Uh, it has to be a fully original King Falcon set and we need about 35 minutes. So you guys got to go write all that music. So we had to write all the music and then we had to record everything because we need the backing tracks because we're only a duo. So we went through this whole like time crunch thing of getting this whole album done just so that we could play that gig on April 1st. Now, the good thing is that we're ahead and we've got all this music that we can release that we've recorded before coronavirus. But the bad thing is that we don't get to play all this stuff live. So it's kind of sucked on one end, but we've been super lucky on the other because we had some fire under our butts before coronavirus to get all this stuff done. So we definitely have more music coming out and the coronavirus isn't going to slow us down a lot. It just might slow our, our videos down a little bit and our shows. But, but as far as all the music, we, we, we have it and it's going to come out. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I feel like I talk about the video thing a lot recently with people because it is like you want to make a good video, but you don't want it to be something that in three years people look back on and they're like, oh, this is a COVID video. Like This is something they made because of quarantine. Exactly. And that's something that we've struggled with because number one, we have to overcome James and I can't be in the same room together. So <laughs> how do we film that? And we don't want to do like a Zoom music video because six months from now, nobody's going to care about that. So how do you make something that has elements of kind of what COVID feels like and the aesthetic, but also five years from now, when people feel differently about this, it still holds up. You're right. Uh, I think you're muted. There's, he's shake isn't shake is a really nice uh polished video for you guys so i can imagine that you want to keep a certain aesthetic going too of course i mean for us um even though we don't have a label and everything that we do is ourselves uh we try to make stuff as high quality as possible you know james has a studio where we we didn't record shake there but we recorded the rest of the instruments uh the rest of the songs there um the music is all as high quality as we can make it you know everything is is super clear and, and we spend a lot of time mixing it and we spend a lot of time with sounds and the music videos kind of have to be the same way you know you're not going to see anything filmed on an iphone you're not going to see uh you know you're not going to see a zoom video we're, we're a professional band and we want our videos to look professional so we uh we got to kind of find ways around the limitations of uh coronavirus but we're, we will and uh i think the next videos will definitely be as as legit as shake well, that's good to hear. Now, thinking about the challenges of coronavirus, and you guys are a new band, trying to get your name out there. You got a new song, hopefully on deck for the next month or two. What are you doing in the meantime to get your name out there? Like, what are what are you finding works for building awareness for King Falcon right now? It's tough. You know, we've been posting on social media uh, a lot. 
which, you know, um, for a band, I think posting every single day is, is a lot. And that's kind of what we do. You know, we're not, we're not going to post like eight, eight, 10 times a day. We're not, we're not a meme account or something like that. Um, so we've been super active on our social media. Um, just talking to fans and stuff and just kind of reaching out. And I think now our next step is going to be, how do we put on a, either a social distance show, either outside in a field somewhere, or how do we do something digitally? And we're definitely going to start doing the digital stuff first. So that's going to be the next step for us. And that's uh, our, our digital tour, I guess, you know, and just uh, make sure that people can come, uh, come watch us on, on their laptops. I, I feel like you have a nice advantage in the fact that, you know, you're starting out building this way, whereas all of, there's a lot of big players that were like, we're going to delay all of our stuff. And now are realizing that delaying isn't really a solution. So, you know, Rolling Stone had this article last week where they were like, all the major labels are basically throwing away the marketing book and having to write a new one because they can't just be like, well, uh, album, tour, tour, album, album, tour, over and over again. So you guys are at least have the advantage of like, you're figuring it out without having to completely overhaul your knowledge of marketing necessarily for this project i i mean i guess in some ways um you know it's definitely uh, a different outcome when you go into something a certain way that rather than when you go into it with kind of preconceived notions of how to do stuff however the flip side of that coin is with bigger artists they all they all have money <laughs> you know like when, like we don't so for if you're i don't know if you're the rolling stones right not not to say, I don't know if they're touring this year or anything like that, but if you're the Stones and you make 40 million bucks a year touring, you could take a year off and nothing happens to you, you know? Um, if you're Justin Bieber, you could take a year off, you know? If you're, if you're a small band, if you take two months off, you can't pay rent anymore. So it's, uh, it's easier in some ways because it forces you to kind of adapt, but it's harder in other ways because we don't have the... Um, you know, the government's not giving us PPP uh, musicians, you know? Yeah, it would be interesting. It will be interesting to see what this period has an effect on the road dog life that so many, especially indie rock bands, really prescribe to. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, I saw something that was, um, was it Brad Paisley? Some country guy played a, uh, an outdoor show at a, a drive-in movie theater. And they were talking about how that's kind of the, the future of music and stuff like that. And again, that's something that you can only do. Like you probably won't see um, smaller indie rock bands playing drive-in movie theaters. You know, that's, that's not really going to be a venue for them. So it's going to be, it's going to be tough trying to get people to, to flood to see anything other than the big names and both I, like the effort required. Absolutely. You know, I have some friends here in Michigan where I live where we've been talking about the drive-in idea since we saw it. And I was like, we should do that. And then pitching the idea, I was like, all right, well, how do you find, uh, how do you get people to come out for a show that isn't a Brad Paisley type or something? Like I saw an article today that Michael W. Smith, this big Christian artist is doing one. And I was like, yeah, but how do we get like Michigan bands? Like we would need to basically have a festival of people performing in order to fill a drive-in theater. And it just seems like, well, that doesn't work because of all these, there's just so many more hurdles for a small artist to try to make these quote unquote fixes work for them. Well, yeah, because all you need is two guitarists to touch the same volume knob on the same amp, and then they've got coronavirus. So how do you how do you do all the back end stuff? You know, it's not like you just show up and start playing. Somebody's got to set up a stage. Somebody's got to set up the PA. It's 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 uh, it's tricky. There's a lot of moving parts. And just having spoken to at least a few drive-in people, like in in that business, a lot of them are like, I mean, it's a cool idea, but we don't know how to do that. Like we're a drive-in movie theater. We get by on like they're basically a DIY venue. They're like, we don't have money to like put on events. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's tricky. It's yeah, it's a tricky time. But I mean, I think that it's it will init- it'll eventually breed innovation. And you guys do have at least a strong single come out because I I know some artists that you know, we're trying to ramp up to their big single or a big fun song. And then all those plans got scrapped. And now they're like, I'm just, I'm in, you know, I'm in my house writing more material that I might someday record that will maybe come out. And I just don't know what's going to happen. At least you guys have this song you can kind of push. And I feel like people that discover it, find it comforting in the way that rock and roll can be. Well, I, listen, I'm really, really glad you dig it. But, but uh, you're right. I think a whole bunch of musicians are going through a tough period right now because you know, when, when you've got 12 hours a day or so to write every day, you know, there's only so much writing you could do, number one, before you tire yourself out. And then number two, you know, I think this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, the writing part 
is exciting for a bit, but that's that's only one part of it. You know, other parts that are exciting. So the recording is something you get super energized about, and then the mixing and and kind of going from idea to finished product. And without other people involved, you know, it's not just it's not just one person that takes something from an idea to a, a finished song. There's a whole bunch of people involved, and not being able to take your ideas that you've spent all this time working on from you know, you and an acoustic guitar to like a finished song is kind of, um, um, I don't know. It sucks. You're, you're like, man, I, I, I want to hear, I want to hear what this song sounds like when it's done and it's, you can't. So yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it sucks. That's all. That's all I can say. Yeah. All my friends keep sending me, um, Apple iPhone voice notes with like an acoustic guitar and a ukulele being like, is this something? I don't know. And I was like, well, what, what will it sound like when it sounds like, I don't, I don't know. But here's like 90 seconds of something I wrote today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody's just kind of, uh, everybody's been engineering on GarageBand and using uh, like what, uh, Dave or whatever the digital drummer's name is. You know what I'm talking about? Where you just kind of drag across the, uh, yeah, it's like a louder, simple, <laughs> whatever. It is. If you've messed around with GarageBand, you know, but uh, all, all of the stuff like that. <laughs> no, I we're building another podcast here at Holix that uh, needed its own theme, and I got it sent to me the other day. We had hired a guy before this started, and he sent me a theme the other day, and I was like, "These drums sound perfect," and he's like, "Yeah, that's Dave." <laughs> it's like that's I, we didn't I didn't do that. All I did was like the guitar. The guitar is just like a strum. I like just quantize the crap out of everything. <laughs> yeah, he's just stealing jobs, taking jobs from real drummers. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, man, this has been fun. It's good talking to you. You seem like you're in good spirits despite everything. I uh, I was really hoping that I would hear when I could hear more music from you guys because I love the single, but it does feel like. Um, feels like an appetizer course like it's a song where it's like it's easily digestible i enjoy it you can remember it but now it's time to like sink my teeth into something that's, about it. that that was the plan so we definitely have stuff that's a little bit more substantial the song the song the rest of the songs are a bit longer uh the production i i'm 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 super proud of the production on shake but the production on the next couple songs that that are going to come out I, I it's something i'm i'm super 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 excited about because it's it's a direction that i think we've never done before uh, we spent a lot of time on it. It's really, really intricate, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. So, yeah, it, it, Shake is a little bit of an appetizer, and I think you could probably expect to see another one mid to end of summer. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>